Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and today we are going to be reading some rules horror. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. Important guidelines regarding, in your case, in Magnolia County Circuit Court. From an email. Subject, important guidelines regarding your case in Magnolia County Circuit Court. It is assigned to look like it might actually be a real thing and not something that can actually be on this, so, but we'll see. This is Mr. O'Hara. I hope this email finds you well. I am the law clerk to the Honorable Judge Mallard now presiding over your suit since it was amended to the Magnolia uh, County Circuit Court. Judge Malagard acknowledges the challenges faced by Pro O O C plaintiffs and has asked me to offer you guidance and understand the procedural nuances of our state court system wherever possible. Offer me some guidance in reading this first. Like most things in Magnolia County, our courthouse has its own local quirks. It's essential to adhere strictly to our procedural rules, as they are the lifeblood of the system, and your or compliance can make the difference between life and death in your case. Your case was amended to state court on January 10th. The initial case management and conference will take place on January 25th at 9.30 at a.m where you'll be required to meet in person with, ju with the judge to discuss the issues of the case and set out a general timeline. You are able to submit filings in person in the clerk's office, or you may set them, uh, submit them online. However, in person, it is limited to the court's business hours. While you're capable of, of submitting filings at any time online, I advise you to avoid doing so between the hours of 11 p.m. and 2 a.m., particularly if you are inside your own home or one of the or the one of someone you love. The clerks of the midnight shift like to trace filings where they come from. They are anxious to reduce the backlog on the docket, and I believe this would be best as, as accomplished through the removal of parties and lawsuits entirely. They can squeeze through any gap to find you. So if you submit to the midnight shift, there is no point in hiding. Leave your computer you filed from at home. Flee. Drive until 2 a.m. has passed. Do not answer your phone during this time. Especially if the caller ID, ID says it's from me. Hang on. <sighs> I will not be calling from the courthouse phone at those hours. Keep moving, no matter what. They know where you are, so you must be fast. Whenever you come to the courthouse, you will go through security. Bring no electronics, as they will not be allowed, and you must remember to trash them before leaving in order to avoid being followed. Once through the line, walk straight, and you will see your case name and which courtroom to go on a large screen showing the dockets of the day. If the screen shows static instead of a docket, exit the court art house and go through security again. If it says courtroom 4, that is an error. No cases are ever assigned to courtroom 4, despite its best efforts. Instead, approach the clerk's office, which is right next to the screen on most days, the clerk will find finding the correct courtroom. If a tall man in a gray suit and sex you while reading the dockets, do not talk to him. He will try to talk to you, to have someone to walk with him to courtroom 4. He has been a lawyer for a very long time, and can be quite convincing, so you must leave the situation as soon as possible to avoid letting him convince you. Do not smile or greet anyone with a briefcase. If anyone asks, asks, you have a lawyer. Never say you do not need representation. There are many willing to create misfortune in your life if, in the goal of landing a client. In the three years I've been here, 
I've seen several litigants like yourself come back months later in the midst of custody battles or as defense to horrible claims. One such plaintiff claimed his vision had gone sharply black as he was driving down his street, like someone had placed hands over his eyes. They had no way of seeing his daughter in the road when he struck her. As he said, at this on his, and his counsel, one of the men from the hallway, sat and stared at him, black eyes gleaming like the polish on his briefcase. Do not engage with any lawyer besides opposing counsel, who in this case I know to be human. Make sure to wear hard-soled shoes and step loudly while in the building. The court appreciates being able to hear where you are, especially if you're walking without an attorney beside you. Silence is deadly. If the court cannot hear you, it cannot help you. If you walk beside the man in the gray suit, the court will assume he is your lawyer and will not interfere until he is taken into courtroom 4. As a general note, I would advise you to be careful about opening doors in the courtroom besides your assigned courtroom and the bathroom. About once a year, a case disappears through one of the um, unmarked doors, and there's little we can do to assist you once, we start, once you start missing deadlines. Courtroom 4 often pretends to be unmarked, and there is nothing we can do if you are caught in that thing's web. If we find you desiccated on the stairs in a few weeks, the judge will be quite displeased with me for not teaching you the rules, and a tall man will stand in front of my desk and smile at me for hours. He will ask to walk me home, and I will have to wait for the judge to force him to leave. And the judge will take longer if he is angry with me. It's never good when Art Room 4 is fed. There will likely be several casing for seeing yours. As you wait, Await your turn in the courtroom, choose a wooden view, and sit quietly. Should you notice an unoccupied chair at the back of the courtroom, it is crucial that you do not draw attention to it. During court's proceedings, acknowledging the presence of the empty chair is strictly prohibited. In the event that someone else does, knock three eyes upon the solid wood of the pew three times. Close your eyes and wait for court proceedings to break the signs for opening them again. Do not look at the chair after it has been acknowledged even once the deportation is complete. Should you have any questions or, ne in, or need any further or, or clarification on these rules, contact me at the below phone number during normal business hours. Oops. I'm just going to hide that. Or else... Dive in fully, including the country code, or else it will not be me who answers. Do not reply to this email. I advise you to navigate our judicial system with respect and caution. Be aware and stay sharp. Sincerely, O. Colon, Law Clerk to the Honorable Judge W. Malregard. And we are not showing that number. Not because I think that it will actually lead to the person and that wrote the story, but because I think it might just lead to unneeded and unwanted harassment of that person. A set of rules for the eternal security guards. Nighttime regular duties. Well, so it looks like you have finally decided to do something with your life, eh? You have had an itch forever. Craving that se mm, excuse me. That sense of making this accursed world a better place, right? You don't need to answer that. Of course we knew it. Otherwise, we would not have gone through all that work to find you and procure you with that interview. And rest assured... You will be doing exactly that. 
bringing a light of hope to everyone in this sea of darkness and uncertainty. Now we are already have told you what it is exactly we do in this company of us. And while most people tend to call us insane after that and probably running out this facility, they don't get too far, but you didn't hear that from me. You and very few outsiders have taken this important task at hand. For that, we are grateful and know that you will be report rewarded properly. As you discussed with our financial department, your first week here will net you with a salary of about $2,165 per hour, and it will only get better after every week of experience. And even you'll all manage to get some benefits here and there, and that will be discussed later. I don't like that they're just doing random capitalization of, sorry, of random words. As every employee here, the guards have a duty to fulfill, and it's not a simple one. As is common knowledge for you at this point, we guard and study various situations. Don't worry about the name, we'll review on your next shift. And for that, we take no unwanted risks. Now let's tell you about the rules. And for sorry, this is logbook you are now currently holding in your hands, and the reason why it's very important you treat this book with respect for the first weeks of this job. This logbook here will be your friend until you are acquainted with the tasks of your role here. For Cyrus, this will let you understand the overall rules and precautions you must take as a security guard. Please note that at according to your contract, you perform a series of different roles here depending on the situation at the moment in the organization. So needless to say, you need to take the, these rules seriously and remember them to the very last minute detail. You don't want any unwanted situations occurring during your time here. Let's get to the rules. 1. Your shift will begin from exactly 10.23 a.m. to 5.23 a.m. However, you should arrive at around 10 a.m. sharp since it is going to be the... Since it is going to be at least 20 minutes early. This is uh, overall a good rule for your personal life too. 2. Your locker will not have any number, never locker suit. However, they are all painted according to your role here. So don't bother you with all the rules here on, the... here on your first shift. Your locker will be the last one on the corner, painted black. 3. When you arrive at your, work at your workstation, your role will be simple. Guard or back interests. Make Entrance, and make sure no one unauthorized or unfamiliar makes it out of, out of, out of the facility. Wow. Taking into, four, taking into account that we studied very unnatural phenomena, and it is it's known that a lot of situations are bound to occur your, your workstation. You must never panic if you run into any of them. The situations will not get better if you panic. Five, another rule to take into account is that unless spoken through our speakers, you should not talk, talk back to whatever you hear in your workstation. A source of sound will try to deceive you, so persist with your work and don't let it get to your head. 5a, some of the noises you'll hear are listed here. Note that it's not uh, limited to all the sounds heard. Oh god, help me! Can't you see what they've done? I could feel them crawling inside me. You know what you did. It was your fault. You must pay for your mistakes. Six. Should you ever feel a sudden warmth in your workstation, don't fret. It's controlled. Another situation has been resolved. The furnace has been activated. It's not harmful, although it's advised to cover your nose as the smell is unpleasant. 7. Should you ever see a more important feel of the humanoid from your workstation, you are not to engage with it, lest you have a death wish. Rather, hide whenever possible, and wait until you no longer see it or feel it. After a few minutes, you should be clear. 
Hmm. 7A. If you are forced to engage with it, it, first of all, we are sorry for what may happen. And second, our only method we have found of dispatching it, it's very rudimentary. You must take any blunt melee arm that you may find in your bar station and invest it in combat. This may sound easy, but we assure you it's not. Out of our 24 guards that have attacked the back entrance, all 13 of them have, have been forced to engage the humanoid. A creature have perished at its hands. Or better put, claws. 8. Should you hear an alarm blazing over the facility, do not panic. Your task now is to open the main gate and let inside the response team. You recognize them due to their looks. Fully armored soldiers with heavy machine guns and their company brand on their back, helmet, and chest. Under very rare circumstances while well, you see them again, do not hinder their path. They are to be, be fallen under any situation. God or whatever else you believe in, forbid you don't follow your other instructions. You should never open the gate for anyone else than them. 9. After your shift ends, you have to clock out, go to your lockers, and please leave your uniform at your locker. After that, clock out and leave the premises until your next shift. And that would be everything as far as jobs go. You have relatively, he's speaking, easy one. The back entrance is mostly abandoned and only is really used when the response team needs to get inside. Do you know that most most of the threats that have in your shift are due to the humanoid creature we have mentioned. It has been a costly foe for all of us. No one has had the opportunity to kill it. Besides that, your other foe are the voices. But as long as you have a good grip on your task, you will do fine. Even if all the other guards on that sector have died thanks to the voices. If you die, which is very likely, know that you have done mankind a good labor. Besides all that, do what you can. We will see you soon, Eternal Company. The best hope for all of us. <sighs> These headphones I'm wearing have a funny way of tickling my ears and and hurting them. Anyway. Invalid rules number one. The factory on the edge of town. No, invalid town rules. My bad. Welcome to Invalid Town. You may have noticed some of, our, uh, some of your weird and odd neighbors talking to you lately. Don't mind them. They're harmless. Just never follow them into the woods at night or eat any food they make. They're people like you, you know. They've just been breaking too many rules and Invalid Town's odd nature got to them. I'm here to explain the rules of this town, starting with that ratty old factory on the edge of town. So you might have noticed that the central square mile of this town is relatively normal, except for your aforementioned neighbors and the odd stenches. However, only the desperate go over the wall to the outskirts. That's what we call it. It used to be a, a part of the main town area. Ever since the poor people with addictions and other less harmful beings came in, we've isolated ourselves from them. Sorry, I'm not calling them what you called them. They're people. Anyways, you're in need of cash and word of mouth from some of the few normal people here at, at the outskirts has a nice supply of goodies and old junk that people want in the old factory near the border to the next town. On over. You want to retrieve some of that old junk. I'm warning you, try anything else first. Even asking your neighbors for money or doing, the, or doing their odd jobs that they offer. But if you're truly that desperate for money, then go. So you arrive at the factory, it seems normal on the outside. The smell of oil, the worn sign, the set of double doors, but here are the rules you must read before you go in if you want to come out of that factory.
in the world of the living. Sorry, I got lost my place for some reason. Rule 1. There are five sets of double doors on the front. They seem to rearrange themselves often. I'll even go through the one with the most wear and tear on the handles. That's the one everyone goes through. The other doors lead somewhere lead elsewhere. Nobody ever comes back when they open the wrong door. Some say this leads you to more dangerous parts of town that nobody knows. But if it's worse than this, you don't want to know. Rule 2. Once you enter the factory, pretend like it's wondrous. Pretend like it's the best place you've ever seen. The factory likes compliments. It might give you an easier time leading through it. It might even be more lenient on the rule breaking. Rule 2B. Never, ever treat the factory like it's ratty and old. If you cough over the dust, make noises of disgust, or vomit at the horrible smell, we don't know what will happen to you. Rule 2C. Never break anything in the factory, unless it isn't part of it. Vegetation plants and products that were made here are fine. Just not conveyors, desks, chairs, or anything native to the factory. Takes that as an insult. Rule 3. The loot isn't for a while ahead. A couple of days' trek shouldn't be bad if you're that desperate anyways. Once you go in, there's no turning back. Going back into a room you came from might alert to whatever is following you that you know it's following you. Rule 4. Check out any products on the conveyor. If you like the product, the factory might make more of it in the upcoming rooms for you. This could be food or any of the expensive loot. The loot ranges from old technology to copper or in gold bars. If any room has two doors on Rule 5, if any room has two doors in it, you have two options. The wrong option will lead to an uncharted, horrible, dangerous five mile dash away from all, all your worst nightmares. We have no idea what's in store there. Five A. If a computer, if the room has a computer hanging out of the wall that has signs saying assistance above it, you can ask it politely for height for help via typing into it. Be polite, or it will direct you wrongly. Five B. If the room doesn't have a computer, then you'll have to guess. If you were polite to the factory, then your intuition will be right. Rule 6. Sleeping in the factory is tough. It doesn't control the creatures inside of it. It might give you a closet or office to sleep in. However, even that is dangerous. What's been quietly following you this whole time is finally here. You could try to fight it. However, you will be decimated. It isn't the only creature here, and it can call for backup. Try to run through rooms, lose its path, it'll find you again if and, and you will hear it coming and be able to pick up the pace again. Once you sleep, it will chase after you at an average pace for the rest of the journey. Rule 6b. Never sleep near cracks in the walls. The thing following you has little minions that aren't very threatening. However, groups of that 20 plus live inside the walls and tend to ambush and maim the people who sleep near them. Rule 7. The second day will be better after you wake up. You will see the creatures running after you about 20 rooms behind you. Thank the factory for reminding you, and get up and run. The doors should lock behind you from now on, but this thing can break through them in a few seconds, so you better be fast. If it catches you, you will die. 
Rule 8. Around halfway through the factory, you will encounter a room with a bolted door that takes a creature about an hour to break through. Once again, thanks to Factory for saving you. You will find a dusty backpack with $100 in here. Thanks to Factory once more. Not thinking the, the factory could lead to purposeful mishaps down the line. Rule 9. Keep your sanity throughout the last half of your journey. The last half is complete darkness. If you follow all the rules, the turret or should be waiting for you, but only lasts a couple of hours. The darkness tends to get to people and make them go insane. They become the creatures you encounter here. Rule 10. The creatures are tall, lanky. They look malnourished. They live in corners. One advantage to not having torches is that you can sink past them and they won't know. These creatures are partially deaf but very strong. If they see you, use your knowledge on human weak points. It might disorient them or knock them out. Rule 11. The second day of sleeping is hard. The creature following you is faster in the dark, where it knows it can't be seen. It will know where you are. It knows this place better than you. Try to sleep in a room without the creatures mentioned in Rule 10, as you will be in your sleep if you do. Just remember to be vigilant and be aware of your surroundings before you sleep. Rule 12. You've made it to the last court order of the journey. A horrible, noxious smelling gas is leaking through every pipe. Expensive items such as antiques, watches, and gold jewelry litter every corner, every conveyor. However, the creatures featured in Rule 10, as well as one, as one following you, are stronger and faster due to this gas. Rule 13. Once again, do not acknowledge the smell as it will lead to the fact of disliking you and not giving you loot or helping you through the journey. Rule 14. Store all loot in, in the backpack. You cannot put an item back once it's in there. The factory will see you as unappreciative. Rule 14. In B. Once the backpack is full, don't take any more loot. You can fill every pocket and even the bottle holder of the bag just once it's full. Never carry anything else. Rule 14c. You'll be seen as unappreciative if you drop any item. Even if you're chased, pick up what you drop. Rule 15. The gas will make you sleepy and the darkness won't help. Don't go to sleep from the gas or you'll wake up as one of them. Rule 16. You've made it to the last 20 rooms. Congratulations, you made it to the last 20 rooms. These are tests from the factory to see if you're worthy of its treasure. Each one is a maze of walls, all with cracks in them and creatures around every corner. Be quiet, make no noise, and have no light on you at all times. If you see the exit to the room, run for it. Rule 17. If, you're, if you hear weeping or screaming, run. The creature following you is back again, and it won't give up on its meal. Rule 18. There is never any two people in the same spot of the factory at a time. Don't ask me how, it's just how it works. If you see another human in these rooms, ignore it. It won't leave you alone if it knows its disguise is working. Rule 19. The second to final room is the hardest. You will be chased by every creature down long maze of hallways and corridors. If the factory likes you, once again, your intuition will prevail. If it doesn't, I'm sorry I had to end like this for you. But once you reach the door, it will slam shut. No creatures can break through. Rule 20. The last room is full of money, no gas, bright lights, a safe place to sleep, and fresh food. This is thanks from the factory for proving your worth. Do not eat the eggs or any dairy products. You will also have tons of loot if you haven't filled your bag. 
taking in more of the bag is full now. I mean, you get better to the beginning with none of the amenities provided to you. Thank the factory one last time and leave. The exit will lead you to a safe path to home. So, do you still want to go in? Are you brave enough? The factory awaits. You've been at this for half an hour now. <sighs> Rules for late night ramen at my house. So you woke up past midnight to make yourself some delicious and terribly unhealthy instant ramen at my place? Well, here are some rules you need to follow. Oh, to survive. Mom and Dad aren't who they're supposed to be at this time of night. Mother segment. Do not interact with mother or father unless deemed necessary by later rules. To be absolutely sure to put the flavor of the packet in first, then the water, and finally microwave it. Do not attempt to boil water using the kettle. Wait, I'm sorry. What sort of uh, cursed ramen making are you doing? 3A. On most nights, Mother will be in the living room. She may have fallen asleep or on the couch or floor mattress when on fatigue, or she may be up late watching dishes and or organizing things in the kitchen. She may act interact with you, but do not pay any mind to it if she calls it to you in English. She will usually suggest snacks or let you know the things within the pantry. Don't respond. Three B. If mother calls you in her first language, Spanish, pay close attention to what she says and respond in Spanish. If it is a question relating to your late night food adventures, if you do not know Spanish, then I'm so sorry, but I cannot help you. Three C. If mother speaks to you in a very trashy Italian, Tell her she's watched too many Disney movies and move on without uttering a matter word. 3D. If Mother speaks to you in any other language, go back to bed immediately. 4. This might be a universally given, but when you are making a robin, make sure to never let the microwave finish. Always open the microwave door in order the robin to enjoy it at one second of time. The things that will happen to you if the microwave beeps will be unimaginable. 5. Eat all of your ramen and drink the broth. Nobody likes wasting food. Especially not my parents. Please wash your fork and put away. Mom works very hard to keep dishes clean. Six. If mother is asleep instead of awake, then do everything in your power to not wake her up. If she is awoken, your fate is sealed. Father segment. Father is usually never present in the living room, but has been appearing more and more often here lately. He's not like Mother. She's quite merciful and kind. She may even and allow breakage of, of rules once or twice, such as not watching the fork or finish the ramen. Father does not have such generosity. 2. Do not talk to Father under any circumstances. Father will not talk to you. He sees no need to. If father speaks to you regardless of language, the only thing you do is pray your death is swift. 3. Father is only a danger when awake. He will usually be on his phone or laptop. He is practically impossible to wake up when he's asleep, and if he's indeed asleep, it nullifies all rules and you may do as you please. 
Only one rule stands while he's asleep. You cannot let the microwave beep. 4. Father may is sent up to get food from the pantry, or grab insulin from the fridge, for he is a diabetic person. Please stay at the dinner table until he closes the fridge or pantry door. Pray that he closes it before the timer on the microwave runs out. Whatever he does as a close, and if the timer is running low, keep a small distance from him. Or he may still be injecting insulin and may decide to stab you with a needle. Go open the microwave and head back to the table with your ramen. 5. Glance at Father or er, er, two every now and then, and please eat your ramen in a chair with, and even one of his feet in our arms is in the right line of sight. He's nearly as silent as I am when I walk. You won't see him coming until it's too late. Keep an eye on him, but don't stare. 6. Once you're done, and you watch the silverware use, please head back to bed. Now, I know oh, I said not to interact with him, but this is an exception. When you're going to go to bed, unlike Mod, you must get his attention and say, Good night. But it's not just bye, see you tomorrow, or simply wave at him. Now that's settled. I hope you enjoy your ramen and have a wonderful night at my house. <laughs> Welcome to Suburbia. Hi, I'm David from Number Six. I'm glad that you chose to move to suburbia. It's a great neighborhood with some interesting sights. Before you move in, here's a list of rules to keep you safe. Happy moving! 1. This neighborhood consists of exactly 18 houses. No more, no less. If you see any houses numbered higher than 18, do not interact with them or, nor anyone entering or leaving. Don't even acknowledge your existence, or you'll be sorry! 2. Do not interact with anybody living at a house with an odd number. They are not here to help you. They are looking for their next meal. If you accidentally interact with one, apologize immediately and draw blood. They will accept the offering and leave you alone. But if they do not, well, it won't be pretty. 3. Lock your doors and windows by 11 p.m. and have all of your curtains shut. If a silhouette appears behind a curtain, do not investigate. It will be gone by morning. If you do not lock everything, they will find a way in. You cannot kill them, but they can kill you. Four. If anybody, including me, has a red tint in their, in their eyes, they've been possessed by the entities. Do not interact with them until you notice their eyes have returned to normal. Eye contact is fine unless their eyes are fully red. If so, avoid them at all costs. Five. Once a day, you must open the basement door for an hour. Ignore your screams. The basement can be manipulative. It is friendly if you give it breathing space. But never enter the basement unless staying outside of it is worse than what is inside. Six, you must go outside into your front garden every night at 1.30 a.m. Otherwise, the entities inside your house will eventually get to you in your sleep. 7. Every week, a small girl with dry clothes will knock on your, be on your door begging for some, for some food. Wow, I can't speak, apparently. Close the door immediately and uh, bolt it. She's relentless, and if she gets inside, you're doomed. Eight. If you wake up and see a figure at the end of your bed, do not acknowledge it. Ignore it and go back to sleep, and it will eventually leave you alone. Nine. If you see the sky turn red at any point of time, grab half a weapon, turn off every light you can, and go into the basement, locking the door behind you. The basement will understand and protect you. But if you look at anything inside, it will become aggressive, so do not emit any light. If anything gets it, it's in, be prepared to follow the next rule. 10. If you're about to be killed or ha you have broken any rules, then kill yourself by any means possible. It's a better fate than what is coming to you. 
At the bottom, you find a note scribbled in blood. Eleven. Don't trust the number six. Hmm. <sighs> Welcome to the valley. We will pray for you. If you find yourself reading this, we offer our sympathies for whether unfortunate string events led you here. We cannot guarantee you will survive this place. We can only offer our best advice. Well, that and our prayers. One, try not to make much noise. The valley is generally forgiving. And it might leave you alone. But if prefer silence, you, want to, you will want to say in its good graces. Two, don't break anything. We cannot stress enough how important this is. Even if it seems man-made, everything here is part of the valley. Breaking something will mean injuring it. If you do, we're sorry. There's nothing we can do for you. Three A. Don't eat or drink within the valley. Starvation and dehydration are preferable to raising the valley's ire. 3b. If you must eat or drink something, that is, if you're leaving yourself into thinking that you'll survive, as the defense that surrounds the valley, then eat. Well, I can see everything within it, but it does have blind spots on the outside. If you're lucky, you might have to be upon one of them. Don't stay outside too long, however. Remember, someone put you here in here for a reason. Four. After reading Rule 3B, you might be inclined to stay near the fence. That, however, is a mistake. You can't let the valley know that you're here against your will. It will be offended. Five. Stay out of the shadows. There's nothing in them usually, but that's not a chance you should take. Six. If you see birds, you are doing something the valley doesn't like. Figure out what it is, and stop it immediately. If the birds start singing, it's too late. Seven, you are alone. There is someone in the valley with you. If you see anyone, run. If they chase you, run faster. If they catch you, we're sorry. You're one of them now. Nine. Huh, they skipped eight. Don't ever try to kill anything in the valley. Ten. There's nothing living around here. If you think you saw an animal, run away. Eleven. The valley is not your friend. Insofar as you don't disturb it, it will permit you to exist. But it will not help you. If it seems to be helping you, do precisely if the opposite of what it seems to want you to. For example, if a path opens up that seems right and safe, go the other way. Don't trust the valley. 12. If you feel like you're being watched, don't be afraid. You are right. 13. Enjoy yourself. For God's sake and for yours, enjoy yourself. So long as you're in the valley, you're grateful for it. You will thank it for accepting you. You will thank whatever kind God led you to it. You are delighted to be in the valley. Do not think anything bad about the valley. At best, don't think at all. It can read your thoughts. If the valley suspects that you don't adore and worship it, we are sorry. 14a you might notice that if you think with words, the voice in your head now doesn't match yours. That's normal. 13b. If you think with images, you might find yourself imagining new, inventive ways to injure, mutilate, disform, amputate, and generally harm yourself. Do your best to resist them. If you can't, the urge, if the urge grows too powerful, small doses should be enough. 
You need to blood you spill in whatever tissue you might cut off. This will provide light rule 3, but it is fair in giving the valley a taste of your, own, of your blood. 15. If you do anger the valley, don't forsake the rules. Don't try to kill yourself either. Not, not only will it not work, it will anger the, the valley further. Never, never assume the situation can't get worse. It always can. There is no end to the valley's creativity and cruelty. If you do know that you're, you're doomed, that is, you hear birds singing, sit down on the spot and pray. It won't save you, but it might bring you some comfort. God knows you'll need it. And that, hang on. And that was r slash rules horror. If you liked this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. So until then, goodbye!